as far as some some real life uh, practices or tips about your truth meter. Uh, first and foremost, a couple other wordings that we that might um, spark some inspiration within you when we talk about truth meters is, like I said, the heart center, your moral compass, ethics, um, your conscience, your inner voice, uh, inner wisdom, higher sight, um, your guts. Some people say listen to your guts. I think that's wonderful. Um, the angel and the devil on the shoulders, kind of another visualization of, of your truth meter. Um, this function of assessing and allowing um, your heart and your mind to work together will create this spiritual discernment. And using that spiritual discernment when you are approached with things or, or, or when you come, up, come across information or whatever, you will feel it, you will hear it. You will learn and know um, whether it's rubbing you the wrong way or it feels good. And it's always that quiet first inkling we get a logical brain up here that hears that and it offers its immediate position. It offers its input. And a lot of times that um, frenetic boss up here can be um, way more egoic, uh, more um, critique -y. In, in like a micromanager almost. And so when it hears that little inkling or whispering, it might immediately, you know, play the devil's advocate or it might immediately be perturbed by whatever that little thing is because it knows and it is thinking about all of these other expectations that are could be social, external, internal, that are already in the mix in the infinite uh, intelligence space out here in the imagination space ready to ride so to speak what based on whatever choice you make right and um, the heart is really unpredictable the heart is really um, intuitive and so it's hard to control and also provide potentialities afterwards and the brain doesn't appreciate that a lot of times. And if you haven't done good communication and clearing and, and, and work around all those spaces, um, it can be really easy to um, get talked into things by your, by your logical reasoning mind and ignore the heart or re, uh, reconfigure the heart or, or whatever. And um, that in itself is going against your truth meter. So just know that. It's not about changing it right away. and It's not about shutting off your mind and just going with every little impulse that your heart says or that you feel. Or that, you know, let's, let's back the track up and not grab it at extremes here. Um, don't try to jump into it full, you know, we, everybody puts their pants on one, one leg at a time, my dad used to say, right? So let's just put your foot in first. Dip a toe in and, and start just gauging that. Am I, am I ignoring that a lot or am I listening to that a lot? Do I even hear that whisper ever? Wait for times to allow it, to hear it, just to give it a voice. And even if you, you are allowing that brain and, and your logical frame to override and say, no, X, Y, and Z needs to be done, or oh no, this, this, and this. If, if you fall, find yourself falling into that habitualness of it, that's okay recognize it and next time try again next time here and see if there is movement there is flexibility that you can allow and allow that heart to speak a little bit more and, and, and take some steps of its own but it's it's a slow process it's it, it's personal and individual as well so um, it could be totally different for you but in, in order to even start gauging the truth meter and start weighing it against 
external things out there, you really have to have that space of communication first. At least have a, a tiny bit of knowing what it feels like when your gut's sparked, when your heart is speaking, you know, when it is your brain and, and logicality, you know, like um, leading the way. Getting a feel for those in your own in your own mind space, in your own imagination space, is is so helpful. And um, your infinite intelligence within your body will react to those knowings, to those conscious acknowledgments. You know, um, we tend to forget, and especially our brain, this logical mind. He like loves to think that they're the boss up there, but they actually are are just we're all partners nobody's the boss <laughs> and especially the body's infinite intelligence the more autonomic nervous system you know the things that happen automatically um the subconscious layerings right the this frenetic logical conscious mind doesn't have the power that the subconscious has and it doesn't have um an override really into that more deeper part of the brain right and that part of the brain has a whole infinite intelligence that that's coordinated through your body just like that little glucose flag I was talking about um, those you know we have <laughs> so many different chemical inhibitors and channels and hormones and glands and all of these functions of communication that happen at the cellular or organ level you know the organ system level within our body and we do communicate with that and um, if you get into that knowing space and allow that space to evolve within you, those little tiny functions that you have no recognition of, they will know. They will. They know they're recognized by infinite intelligence because they raise their flag and something, the cellular level comes around and puts that flag down and says, thank you, we know. Or it takes off the sugar, excess sugar and plants it. You know, or you do a run and it needs it. You know, and it, it's... Um, it's subtle. And and so start with the subtle practices first and then work at these more gross external movements and judgments and, um, you know, using your heart meter in that way. Um, then I would say when you have a knowing um, a bit for yourself and you get into this more conscious space, um, you will start to see and feel uncomfortabilities everywhere. Um, and then it's on you to really do the work and to assess the uncomfortabilities and to be that kind of thorn in the side, that kind of person that always speaks up, the kid in class who always has a question. Um, that becomes the next part of being a um, truth meter. You become <laughs> the meter. And there's a lot of real hard heavy lifting at, at first just like when you first start maybe an exercise routine and you're overweight there's a lot of stuff required to get in the flow to lose those extra pounds to to get your body habitually oh this is a whole change we have a whole new lifestyle a whole new healthy lifestyle right it incorporates all these different things that come together over time and build and just like that you your your truth meter will become uh, like all those exercises, you know? All these things will come up and it's up to you to assess them honestly, as honestly as you can, and to really work with them to find solutions that work and to not be looking and finding to demonize, critique, to cast out, to tear it apart and put what you want there, but to see it to see the problems, to see the lies, the distortions of it, offer up that insight to it, um, help it to see a bigger picture, and then ask it, how can I help you now? How can we help you feel better? Bring in more positivity, bring in clarity and truth. Find and align you. That's the space that we'll, you'll start to come to. Just like as you lose weight and as you become just living in a healthy lifestyle, it's not about that heavy lifting that needs to be done anymore. It's just daily maintenance. It's just going to the, you know, doing your little exercises every morning for a half an hour, going for a run, going to the gym a couple times a week. And um, because your whole, everything has changed and the way that you interact has changed. You don't need those heavy lifting um, extreme measures anymore. You just need a little bit every single day. 
an apple a day keeps the doctor away kind of thing, right? Um, our truth meters work like that. So you, you will notice these, uh, you know, heavy shakeups, catalytic events. You might be a big annoyance or a hindrance, both internally and externally, when you choose to live in your truth meter and to actually speak on it and act on it. Um, but this, know that these, the, the wrinkles and, and, and the things will smooth out. And just like your heavy lifting in the gym will smooth out, you'll, it'll come to time when you just need a little bit of maintenance all the time. And, and um, you'll have much more clarity. And all of the external things around you will know when you're in the vicinity, be prepared to be exposed, be prepared to be as you are, be prepared to be accepted as you are, and to be asked to accept others as you, they are too. And that space around you will call forth more of that. But you have to get over the bumps first. You have to get over the smoothing out. And then, you know, that will have a more smooth ride with some just waves in it to where the waves that are coming towards you are meant for you at that level. And then, yes, of course, you know, there are going to be tidal waves. There are going to be coagulations of, of bigger lies and shadows that are building off on the horizon in the distance that are like... Um, knowing that you your light is about to meet their dark level you know and they're brewing off gathering up energy over there because as soon as they feel a link that they're ready to meet you and they think that they're going to come crest upon you so to speak um your light is bright and strong enough to know it's coming and to see it and to do the working through it but it's drawn to you because of the like charges because of the like extremes of um, volume. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, speaking truth always makes me cough, right? And that's another thing too. And I will put this out here as other little practice points that you, as you're, you do the work and you get into more of a maintenance of the truth meter. You will get these little signifiers here, like little tickles in the throat, little personal. Um, red flags sort of things that just are individual to you and your body that you will know um, what they are signifying, what they are calling you to do and what they are triggered by or, or, or whatever. Um, but throat-oriented things, that's one of the things I wanted to bring up about the truth meter and about these little physical tips and tools for the start, right, and signifiers. Um, constriction in the throat, a lot of throat problems, uh, tickly throats, respiratory kind of um, issues or tension in the neck especially can really be from having a closed off throat chakra or energy center here. It has to do with speaking your truth and hearing truth and assessing truth. Um, <clears throat> And also how this channel works, how the communication works between the heart, the throat, and, and your mind's center here. You know, are you distorting a lot of information in, inside your own vessel here to keep yourself comfortable? You know, are you lying to yourself in a lot of ways to um, live in false truths? And if you are, you know, just know that that's fine. It's okay. It's your choices to do that. We do them for many different reasons. And if you have justifications and ifs and buts, but this happened and that, X, Y, and Z, cool. That's great. That is totally um, acknowledgeable and real. And, and take time with that. But go for the low-hanging fruit at the same time. And do you know, assessments where you feel ready to, where you feel called to, smooth those things out within yourself. And, and the larger things will come later. Um, now, let's see. Another thing, you know, um, that I will point out here um, at the end of the video is that The truth and our truth meters are um, multi-layered. Just like I was kind of talking about at the beginning where duality can make things change and we see things from other perspectives and what was good was bad and what's bad is good or, 
or maybe just like kind of trying to see um, when we have a classic hero and a bad guy, a villain or whatever, in a story, and and um, and you find out the villain has this whole backstory, and they have like a sort of justified reason for all of these things of why they are the way they are, and it seems like they are doing good for something for themselves from that perspective. Um, this lens and layering of truth, it, it has phenomenal, eternal values. It, it is such a, an important process for us to get a handle on and to do. And so if you're brand new to putting yourself in somebody else's shoes, seeing new perspectives, um, I highly encourage trying to do that first and, and taking your time with that. If you are past that kind of and you have recycled back around and you're more um, at that higher level now and you're seeing the um, hindrances that, that those kind of practices and, and perspectives bring in, then take this time and this site to really assess the black and white, the good and the bad. Because there is, like I said, I think at the start of this video, there is very structured alignments and purposes. And there is a negative orientation and there is a positive orientation. There is darkness and there is light in this role and setting. And we are implanted in here specifically to work through those, um, those settings and uh, explorations that are needed in, in, in the infinite manyness. Right, um, and so if you are um, noticing a more negative um, pulling, that's um, it's it's fine. It's not even about correcting it, really. It's about Assessing for yourself why it is that you, that you want to develop that further. Why it is you feel a need to investigate into that. Why is it curious to you? You know? Um, and go for it. Understand it. And, and that, will, diving into that, again, will bring you back down into that smaller layer, into that smaller lens, more focused and into the gray areas and then you sort through it and you find definition and then bam you recycle back up again and you can look at it black to white again and you might not feel that steady pulling into negative or that steady pulling into positive it could be reversed up on that higher level um the the thing that i want to impress here at the end though is this sort of gauge that we can use in intermediate journeys between these two sort of levels of balancing um, so that we don't get too lost in the gray areas and that we also don't get too bogged down or um, stakes into the black and white layer. Um, this sort of um, guiding lights for either one I think are valuable um, on either layer honestly and this is where I see the truth in it and so um, I feel it's a it's a good path of working and that is to constantly be asking yourself and measuring um, the intentions surrounding whatever it is the scenarios the interactions the projects the thoughts um, the responses all of whatever whatever it is all of it looking, peeling off the top layer and understanding the intention that's inside um, and seeing where that intention is focused. Is it focused externally um, on some kind of requirement or need of input, energy, information, whatever? Or is the focus and the intent on what is inside of you, what you already have, and what you're looking to give or present or offer 
or share or experience even, you know? Um, it doesn't have to be really about somebody else either. It can be like the experience that you're creating with yourself. <coughs> this um, sort of difference about whether you're looking to pull in or you're needing or, or whatever versus whether you're looking to outwards to share or outwards to experience um, to give yourself to an experience to be a part of an experience right that's the real difference of positive and negative alignments um, sometimes that isn't always especially if we're not clear about what we're you know our internal voices and stuff we can't always tell what we want or what we're asking for in the real intention underneath um, and so other words and other things, signifiers can be really helpful in these categories, right? So it can come off as, um, you can look at it as, okay, is there control mechanisms implanted in this? Is there preset expectations to something? Or is this something that's open and free and free to change, free to be altered or moved or, or whatever? And, and you can gauge your truth meter using that sort of freedom versus enslavement, kind of restriction versus expansion, right? Settling, staying versus rearranging, moving. Um, another great ex uh, example and, and way to incorporate your truth meters um, can be this negative and positive settings, but I mean about feelings and emotions. Um, and, and if everything's cloudy, sometimes the gut can come through with these initial emotions, or sometimes we have an overwhelm of certain emotions and that can really, um, help us to tap into where our truth meter is at within ourselves. So if you are feeling or are, um, encountering a lot of emotions that are more on this uh, fear, shame, blame, um, anger, aggression, um, apathy, um, anxiety, depression, worries. If you are on that spectrum a lot of time, a lot of the time, or you find yourself reverting over there then no, you, your, your truth meter, isn't it? It's got a alignment problem, you know? It's stuck over here a bit. And that is telling you that you should do some internal work. <laughs> you know, you, you really should be um, going into that deeper level and getting into the gray areas and sorting through those, those, those feelings and situations and, and uncovering them for yourself because your truth meter is stuck. And if you're in if you're encountering a lot of that kind of negative emotions and, and you feel like on a negative setting a lot or maybe you feel imposed by a lot of like um, drama in, or, um, or, or whatever, um, then just know that your internal truth meter is affected by that and you're not getting clear signals. Even as much as you want to try to liar loop yourself into it and maybe you, you want to try to um, give excuses and reasons and stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, know that no matter what kind of um, epiphanies, enlightenments, truths that you're finding, they're all shaded in negativity. Um, and at the end of the day, your shadow is benefiting from that, not your light. Um, and, and the collective shadow in general is being fueled by that and, and not the light and again that's your choice but but if you're trying to tell yourself that you are you know going towards ascension higher self on this path of uh, greater good and you're doing that well you're creating even more distortions within your truth meter so it's really really off you know um if if instead you know you're feeling a lot of really good emotions you're feeling um you know Stability, positivity, love, acceptance, admiration, you feel supported, you feel firm foundations, connected, um, then know that you're, you're more likely to 
be able to hear truth. You're more likely to be able to accept truth for what it is. That doesn't mean, also I want to put in like a, a quick little reminder here, there is a stuck on positive side, just like there's a stuck on negative side. There is a stuck over on the positive side to where it's total um, liar loops, just like the, the negative side, but it's spiritual bypassing the same way. Um, except, you know, you're, you're harnessing um, the positive emotions and, and the internal feedbacks on, on the positive side, but it's still a negative, a negative overall charge and pulling inward because you're manipulating those good quote unquote feelings to be filling up your self um, for self-serving purposes, and that in itself has a negative over, overall charge. And we all know negative and a positive is a negative, right? Um, you have to have positive, positive to be positive. <laughs> um, <coughs> that tricky negative, you know. Um, there's the middle ground is what I'm what I really wanted to impress here at the end of the video um, is being able to gauge that real truth with assessment you know and hearing and seeing what you're what is real in there um I guess um, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I've already talked for 45 minutes. So I think I might just leave it here for now. And um, if anybody has, you know, real life experiences or they have difficulty with their truth meter, or perhaps they'd like to talk more about how we can gauge um, internal conflicts or external conflicts, you know, I'd love to hear input on people, what they'd like to hear about me talk about, or if you have, um, input or comments, send me an email, put a comment down in the replies. I love it. And in the meantime, you can always find me on Telegram, um, A. Marie Speaks. I have a podcast on Spotify as well. And of course, you know, you can go to amariespeaks.com, which is up and running again and is full of tips and tools. Everything's free um, across all things introspection, spirituality, and happiness. Um, or if you want to find out more about me or whatever, <laughs> there's information on there about that as well. Uh, writing in books and things like that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for listening to this video, which has been all about our truth meters. I hope that it has been inspiring and has resonated truth with you. So um, definitely let me know in the comments. <laughs> and I will talk.